Hi friends, this is Ganesh. Hope you are doing wonderful. In this video, we are going to see how to send uh, filter options from front end to back end. So we have seen so far how to get the data from uh, back end system through O data service for our front end application. So we are going to continue the same along with the filter options. How to send the user input? Uh, from the front end to back end and in the back end side um, very specific in the odata level so which method and which parameter can hold the user input from front end so those are the things which we are going to see today and we have many options to send the filter uh, values maybe in the view level or controller level and today we are going to see in the controller levels so how based on the user input maybe i'm going to have one button so if the button is clicked then i need to send the user entered value from the front end to back end system okay let's get into the system sorry slides first And uh, today we're going to see about the get method, the filter option for the get method. Probably we can see about other methods, uh, filter options, maybe in the further videos. Probably it could quite be it could be same, but we have other videos as well. So this is my um, output in the UI front sales material and value for an example now I'm going to uh, introduce sales and material as an input parameter from the front end so the user is going to uh, select or is going to key in the value of sales and material then I'm going to pass that values from front end to back end system and to quite uh, coding also to be in the back end uh, because after reading the value so we need to add to the select statement so for the selector is taking uh, simply from database table without any var conditions now we're going to add a var condition for those two fields okay so those are the things which we have to do in front end as well as back end for this process so So from the front end perspective, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make uh, input options, I means input field, fields and buttons because it's going to be two fields in the UI screen and that's going to be done in view level. Next, I need to write a code uh, to receive the user input, whatever the user has entered in the UI applications that needs to be received in a variable and that needs to be sent it to a backend along with the O data service. So which O data service is bringing the data, we are going to send the filter to that O data service. Then in the backend, in the specific get entity method, get entity set uh, entity method, sorry, get entity set method, we are going to write the code as well. Okay. So in the front end view and controller uh, level, we need some changes. And in the back end, so the value which we are sending that is actually capturing in two levels or two places in the backend system. Uh, technically signatures uh, get entity set method signatures uh, there are two parameters one is internal table it filter select option another one is a string variable uh, it's iv filter string okay both are coming under dpc extension uh, class methods so with the help of that i'm going to receive the values whatever is coming from ui and i'm going to add into the select statement i have already a select statement i'm going to add in the back condition okay it's very simple only these things we are going to do in front end as well as back end so we'll see uh, how we are going to add in the front end because that is a new area for us select uh, adding a work condition select is pretty simple for us so view level um, you can just write whatever you want but here I, I prefer to go with a simple form for our for my layout uh, so I'm going to add a label and label as a text as a sales order and one is for material and this is um, label and this is a text so this ID is pretty important because we are going to read the value from the ID only so this is the ID of the input box and this is the ID of the input box and finally I have a button with uh, text and then we have the uh, action called press equal to get data 
so technically event handler uh, this function to be is going to be implement in controller.js file okay so the next one is so in the controller level so how you're going to uh, write the code so we're going to uh, see the steps how to read the value from the input variable and how that value to be mapped with the odata level and how that is applied to our uh, as a filter as well so these are the three main steps which you're going to do one by one so the first one i want to read the user input values so for that we are using the a standard way of reading the value from a field so it's going to be help us over here so i'm going to just declare on the flow variable some variable name it, it can be anything it's not the same as your id just any name is equal this dot get view by id input field value what is the input field value in the previous screen that is so right so this is the input field value for sales order input box and this is matnr for the uh, material input box okay it's case sensitive so if you go with camel case just go with the uh, camel or if it's full caps go with the full caps okay so that is need to be here so that is going to be captured and this steps are for one field so if it is a multiple just repeat the same and then you need to get the reference of the table element by its id because the table is a place where we are going to display all the output uh, record so that also needs to be captured as a reference variable over here so i'm going to use the same thing this get me by id and table id so every table has its own name id just get it that one and then uh, form the filter option so again i'm saying it's everything is for one uh, particular uh, field only okay so we can repeat the same for the second one so here variable this also any name you can give i just simply give filter one equal to so new SAP UI model dot filter and here you have to give the odata field name of this particular SO field okay so that will see a little clear in while you get into the system and then what kind of operator you're going to apply along uh, along with this value okay so that is something but SAP UI model filter operator dot equal so equal is operator that is but coming under this library and equal comma step one variable step one variable is over here is so so that you're going to you have to keep it here okay and you can have uh, different operators equal less than contains so we'll see in maybe the next few slides or you can just play around what are other operators are available and you can make use of it based on your user requirement so this is the three simple steps so get the uh, user input in a variable and get the reference of your table which has all the data and form a filter option with a variable as well okay and then get the table item details so uh, always you have an aggregation of any components so table also you have aggregation so that normally it's a, it's a items it's, it's a hard code hard code in the sense it's a by default you have a name called items only so you're going to take that reference also okay so step to table reference so we have already have a table variable reference we already created so with the help of that you're going to get the reference using get binding method so get binding of items and finally we're going to apply the filter so uh, apply the filter is this one okay here t small here also small but it's by default it comes with the caps the caps please ignore it so table items dot filter and you have to give what are the filter you have made previously so we have made only one right so this one filter and if you have more than one you can use separated by comma comma filter too okay so this is pretty simple to uh, receive the value in the ui level and send back to your odata so so this will take care the pass the information to your odata in the back end actually and a few more things if it is a more than one just add one more line with the same value probably this is going to be different and this is going to be different the second variable and i'm going to have a filter two for the second variable so here order name everything is same probably this is step one variable here i'm going to use sales order here i'm going to use material so now i have two filters and uh, uh, so how i can form a filter okay there are a few options you have so either you can create a filter one by one this one so filter one by one or you have an option of 
this uh, value also or uh, this process also so i'm going to combine two filter values so using this particular library sap ui model filter and filters it's kind of an array so filters just add what are the filters you want filter one filter two and everything and you have to use and false or true either you have to consider this filter as an and otherwise or okay and whatever filters you are using here this one it's by default it's and okay and here you have an option to specify i want to use and otherwise or so you just make use of this option both are same but this is an array different way of uh, forming the filters and finally how to pass this filters this is the variable of the entire filter is nothing but same thing table items dot filter within bracket um, input underscore filters whatever filters you are holding here just pass that particular variable okay so this is another way of forming the filter and what else okay so here what i can do is uh, suppose you have more filters you don't want to write this again and again and again right so you can go with a kind of allies so that we can make it in the component sorry uh, control.js file itself okay we have seen it the same thing we're going to use it for this option also so i'm going to use uh, the allies for sap.ui.model.filter as filter and sap.ui.model.filter operator as f-o-p-e-r okay so how to do that so for that go to the initial stage of your controller.js file mm. oh okay sorry uh, i didn't add it here so that is actually uh, the initial uh, lines of your controller.js within double quotes you might see they used a slash not dot like slash sap slash ui slash model slash filter okay same thing for this also sap slash ui slash model slash filter operator as a first line those are coming in the double quotes and separated by commas after that there is a line called controller within bracket you might see controller comma formatter okay this there is the same order i will show you in the system the same order i'm going to add filter some allies name filter and f o p e r also once you add it in that line then the entire controller js file you can use that as an allies name wherever you want okay it's, it's pretty simple instead of using the bigger one for every time just create it in the initial lines of your controller you can use that allies everywhere in your controller.js file that will i will show you maybe in the system and the one more is contains you have okay suppose i want to use contains uh, options for my filter yes you can use same thing is coming under filter operator dot equal you have option called dot contains okay then we'll see how this reflects in your backend because based on that only we can write a code in the backend system so based on we can see the contents how it reflects in the debugging level then we can start writing the code for that okay so that's it i didn't show anything on backend because we have already done a lot in the auditor service backend so today we're going to see everything in debugging level write a code for it okay so let's get into the system so this is my rental system so i have created one new um, ui template it's a uh, like building from scratch and a few things are the same like what we have seen in the table uh, project so here if you see the app and manifest just for manifest dot json so I have added my Audita servers. After I created the uh, empty template, I have added this Audita servers. And then um, you can see the view. It's almost copy paste, same and uh, whatever you have did from the previous one, the same thing over here. And the data is coming from the same Audita service, CJI sales underscore servers. And uh, nothing much in controller over here. It's, it's by default whatever is there it is there over there so we are going to add a few things in the event handler everything in the controller file so mostly we're going to play around with view and controller for this process okay then yeah let's have a quick output of this view how it's look like it's the same like previous uh, videos whatever we have followed give me a minute 
So this is a value or probably f1, f2 we have used. I removed that because we used for that for a, 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 just a calculation. So that's not required. I removed those two fields. This is directly from the back end. Like all the five fields I'm getting from two different tables. Um, VBAK and VBAP. Um, let's see that code also quite later. Okay. So now I'm going to add uh, an input field for sales order number and material. So for that go to view. And I'm going to use a simple form here. You can just make a use of it some other component if you're okay. Okay, so here I'm going to use. Okay, for that uh, we need this library. Uh, before adding a form, you need this library SAP UI layout dot form. Then I'm going to use that. Nice name form here form colon so control space. You will get all the uh, layouts, but I need a simple form. So let me start with S. Sorry, SI control space. So this simple form class I want. So simple form class and then. The property is layout. Layout equal to so responsive grid layout. So we have a few options or grid layout or responsive layout, whatever it is. So anything is it's fine. So I'll go with this one now. Depends on the requirement here. It just I want to display nothing much, right? So I go with this one. Yep. So now I have to write the code. So first is for label. So I don't waste your time. So I don't because it, it takes some time because this is a, a remote system. So instead of waiting the help, I am just typing out sales order design. And I need uh, input for this. So input ID is very important. So input ID for this is SO. And so value is empty. Yeah, maybe with I can use. So same thing I'm going to use it for my material also. So here's material MAT. So the ID is first is capital, so remaining or small, that's fine. So make sure that the same uh, everywhere we use. Finally, I need one button. Button text is get data. And I will add some other uh, um, options. That's fine. So, get. So, this is my. Okay, let's like, 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 go, go with this. Get data. So, this is my event handler. Okay. So, view is ready. Save it and see how. Yeah, it's fine. So I'm not going to design much here. I need some two inputs, not in the same line. It's fine. So two different inputs. I got it, and I get a uh, input box. It's fine. Sorry, button. So now I'm going to write a code for this get data in my controller.js. Okay. So go here. So in the controller, I'm going to start working after this. These are the few details. That's fine. I'm going to start my function after that. So get data. And this is going to be the function. That's it. So here I'm going to start writing the code. So what are the codes we have seen so far as um, so first uh, step one, I'm going to get the 
values of my sales order and material input box okay so for that i'm going to use a variable um, sales order so any name you can give uh, this is going to be um this dot get view see uh, for the beginners i not me the people always says you can type and type and type more instead of copy paste okay so then only you just come to know what are the uh, libraries what are the functions which you are going to use especially your ABAP background not from the javascript make sure you are type more and just get used to that okay even though if it is same thing you're doing it's fine uh, until you just settle down with uh, most of the steps better you just type more okay? and the value name the field name is SOS capital. Okay. S -O. Okay. And uh, the method is get value. Okay. This is for sales order and this is for material. MAT. And this is. So now the values are coming inside this controller.js in this variable s so, or s order and mat so now i'm going to get the value for my table also right so table i'm not following any uh, standard naming conventions so get view dot by id and your table name so what's the table name I means table id go to view and you have the table id is s table the aggregation is always items so this will will use little later so now i need this table id go here paste it so now almost all the reference are in place okay because if you want to read and write of any uh, screen elements you need the reference first so all in place and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do i'm going to create the filter so filter one equal so now i'm going to use the entire thing like sap dot ui dot model dot filter so I'll, I'll use allies after that okay and then here old data field name if i have to give so what is the old data field name so this filter is going to apply for sales order number so come to the items level sorry items level here so these are the auditor field name so sales and no so make sure the uh, case sensitive camel case and everything so sales and no I'm, I'm applying the filter here so put in single quotes comma again a little lengthy one sab dot ui dot model dot filter operator dot eq okay so comma the variable where is the variable which stores the user input s order just keep it here so one filter is done okay so filter these are the warning messages mean it's meaning it's not used anywhere Okay, so mat is not used, table is not used, filter one is also not used. So we'll go one by one. Um, filter two. So almost same. So this is going to be the odata field name. So odata field name is material. Paste it here. And this is your step one, this one, MAT. So MAT is used, so you'll, you'll, the igno warning message got ignored. So we are good. And finally, we need to get the binding that is from your aggregation. So variable items, okay, you can give anything. So now I can give uh, data equal to so table which I have, I have the reference already. I'm going to make use of that. So table dot get bindings. It's a method 
of items. So it's a hard coded value. We used items in that aggregation. So I'm going to use the same here items. So the final one is we need to apply the filter. Data dot filter of filter one comma filter two. That's it. So the code is ready. Whenever they just click the get data um, button, automatically this will comes and trigger this even handler. Then automatically you can go and see the backend how the filter values are captured in your respective um, DPC extension get entity set method. So then only you are able to write the code on it. Okay. Let's okay. Let me open my backend system also. So this is the backend system. So this is the Odata servers. It's Odata project. And you go to DPC extension. And this is a method which already redefined uh, sales get sales sales date sorry detail set get entity set. This is the code. Uh, previously, this is the code. That's what we are getting 100 rows without any var conditions. So now let let me have a breakpoint, the okay, session breakpoint. Then I'm going to uh, trigger the event handler from the UI level. So go here. Okay. Run it. Okay. Um, it's already I have a session breakpoint. So whenever it's load, also it's pointing to the same get entity set method. So here it's automatically comes. So if I you'll get so 77 because we have only max 77 in the rental system. So we have only 77 records are available. Okay, it's actually kept two different windows executed. Yeah you'll get the information okay so now i'm going to have the value here and this one also so let's play around with the value with uh, sales and material how it reflects with only sales how it reflects okay so get data nothing happened mm. Means it's not stopped in the debugging. Uh, before that, one minute. Form simple button. Get data. D capital. Get data. Button. Oh, okay. Sorry. These are a little careful in Java level. So, case and still. Let me refresh it. So now it goes because it's. It's not because of the event handler. Default goes, it's fine. Execute. Okay, let's try now. Sales order is this. And this get data okay so few more things I believe uh, so here it's model Okay, it's not working. Let's do F12. Okay, so get 
get data go to console so table dot get bindings is not a function okay fine yeah that get bindings so it's got binding let's see let me refresh it first close other tabs execute again Let me go with sales first. Still, I have some issues. I'm guessing some um, field name or some spelling. Let's see. Again, one more F12. Get data. Oh. So these are very basic, at least we can able to understand now because we are a little in the learning stage. So HTTP is a bad request. So whatever we are sending from UI to backend, it's not as expected. So let's see. So these are the main area where we are sending the information to backend, especially the names. Okay, so copy paste mistake. So it should not open braces because it's not able to understand what is the field name. Like Odata, this is the Odata service field name. That is what we designed in the backend. So it's go with some extra alphabet or some spelling mistake. It's not recognized what is this field from uh, UI to backend. It's not able to recognize. It's, it's it's sending back as a bad request. Let's try. Save it. Go here. Uh, refresh. Oops, one moment. Come on, okay, one moment. I need to refresh the web binding itself. Is my change saved or not? Controller, okay, it's not saved. Okay remove this so this is not used to happen to your normal regular system because it's a rental that was oh, come on give me a minute okay it saved i just closed everything and reopened it and now it's saved and then let's execute again stopped here but we are looking for okay now it stopped after select the button like the event handle is triggered and it's come to stop in the get entity set method if you go to local <coughs> excuse me local tab you're able to see two areas where the input from ui is getting filled one is iv filter string another one is it filter select options okay so this is a string area whatever it's coming so this way the query is coming and uh, coming into the get entity set method so you can write a var condition how you want okay and the another option is uh, select options okay sorry again go to local so here you're able to see sales or number and material whatever they enter that values are captured inside your get entity set method so now it's very simple for you to just write a code on it so i'm going to write a code for this filter select option so you can just write it based on whatever um, condition is required based on your business need okay now um one more one minute get data material is empty so yeah middle is empty here and the same thing and uh, this is and 
so by default it's and and this filter option material is empty okay it's not coming over anything in the material as well so uh, we'll write a code and we'll change the filter one more option where we can you can make and and or as an option so we can use that also okay so now i need to go to get entity set method not sure the bar one minute Okay, so here it is. I'm going to write a code. I'm going to get the value from the filter option. So we have different ways. So whichever is comfort for you and whichever is feasible to do it. I'm going to get this first into a local internal table. So value hash. So I need the signatures. So this is the one. Copy this okay and it has a it has a property okay let me close this one yeah okay so it has a property called uh, the field called property and uh, that equals uh, single quotes sales envo this is same I, like your o data field name okay and that's it so based on that it it's comes here but that is a work um, that is a what do you call internal table but i need to be add the value to be uh, moved to my variable so here i'm going to use the same value of it filter yes Anyway, it has only one value and it's low. Okay, so once it is done, so maybe I can use if LV sales is not, is not initial. Well, then go with the var condition here where we be ap in sorry equal to lv sales so i'm not doing material it's it's same so you can do it for your own sales okay activate it so i'm I just did only for value var. here is my bad because it has uh, one more deep structure that is nothing but select options yeah okay it's fine and escape character at yes Okay, we're good. Now let's see how it behaves in the front end. So same thing it should work. Let's do get data. Okay, it's comes here. If I if I what is the sales, the value captured here, and it's okay. It worked with the first if condition. So it just took only the first value. Whatever the value they enter based on that the filter works okay so this is a very simple way how to pass the user input from the ui front and how to handle it from the back end okay using those signature parameters or uh, method parameters now the few things to be added maybe material you can add it so the same way you can add it because the code is already there if you add the material automatically it works only the select statement you have to use and operator for the material also and if another way of um, this one as uh, forming a filter as filter input filters it's a kind of an array it works what happened save it first okay so input filters equal new 
sap.ui.remote.yl I make sure spellings are correct now. Okay, open. Yep. So here I'm going to add the filters, whatever I have done here. Okay, filters. Okay, and this to be closed. Yeah, it's always better. So now I'm going to use the first filter, new sab.ui.model dot filter of just copy paste this no actually I'm, I'm doing this here I can do that copy and paste it so this filter one and this is separated by comma because it's coming inside the array and this is filter two So comma, I'm going to use the end operation as false. Let's see how it behaves. Okay. So almost done. And here maybe I don't want this. I'm going to use data dot filter of this value, this one, because it has more than one filter, right? gathered all the filters here so I'm going to use that what does this error here oh, sorry. Filter. okay so these are warnings because these filter one filter two is not at used anywhere that's fine so now go here again so you get a data initially now I'm going to to the event handler and now the chain the the query the filter query is get changed in the ui perspective so main part we are going to notice is how it's reflect in the back end so go to locals you can see filter string you have a value and if you go and see here the option is or because we made the and as optional from the front end so that's why you're getting the query as or and if you see some more informations the filter select option is not filled okay so that you have to make sure with your front-end development whether you are are you okay with go with the string for the var condition or if you want the value in filter select option then you have to use a different filter option from the front end okay so these are little uh, areas where you have to just have a look on it before making or before do any developments okay so how the values are getting captured in the back end as well so that is very important and finally what i want to show, show is so this part go to the controller yeah so i don't want to do this or paste this again and again and again so what you can do is you can copy this and go to the initial lines of your controller file separated by comma introduce a new line with comma and you can it's just a kind of lines you're saying so going forward i'm going to use a different name for this okay so make sure it's all slash 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 and slash okay and the allies name is going to be added here okay the further in the function you're going to add it here it's in the same order so for this we are going to use a controller for this we are going to use json model and for the next one oh, sorry for the next one i'm going to use any name you can give okay so filter i can say filter and the another one i want to use that library the, the bigger library again and again so go here one more comma slash slash over here and one so I can give F O P R filter option. So now you can make use of this filter wherever you are using model sap.ui.model.filter option or filter library or here. So new filter here you can say filter. 
so this is already assigned that's why you are not getting any error so if you're giving any other name you get an error it's not defined for example if i'm giving filter 2 it shows filter 2 is not defined but filter is already defined because we have used it and so here the entire part i'm going to use f o p r f o p e r right yes and here also i'm going to use f o p e r okay so this could be pretty simple so whenever you need particular library to be as an alias name just keep it here and add the name whatever you know you want and just use it throughout your controller.js oh, this uh, video might be useful to understand how the filter options are getting um, formed in front end and how it's captured in the back end as well okay just go through it if you need any doubt any help let me know thank you so much for your time see you in the next video bye